right? We just look at the word very quickly. Praise God. So I wanted to share this word with us last week. And I said the title of the message is, It's okay to look stupid before men. It's okay. It's okay to be mocked. It's all right. It's okay to be ridiculed. It's okay. It's all right to be insulted by men. It's okay to be called stupid by men. But we are not moved by what people say or think about us. We are citizens of God's kingdom. And in that kingdom, there is a constitution, fundamental principles that guide us. I, that is, that is, the Bible says, I will guide you with my eyes. I will instruct you in the way you should go. We are guided by his word. By his assessment. By what he says about us. By what he thinks about us. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are good. They are not evil. So if people think other things, make other conclusions about you, don't be bothered about that. Don't let that one trouble you. Don't let that one bother you. Don't be trapped like that by what people think. There are people that are so afraid. You know, they, I, 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 you know whatever you fear is your God. You remember the scripture we saw one time that was referring to God. They said the fear of Isaac. It was Jacob that was giving the narration. And he talked about the, the God of Abraham. This is Jacob talking. And he said, and the fear of Isaac. That is, he so feared God that God was referred to as the fear of Isaac. And I'm not talking about who is there, who is coming now. He says, my, the way we used to run away, if you hear the voice of your mom and you scamper, you run for safety. No, not that kind of fear. It's, a, it's reverential fear. Hallelujah. The fear of Isaac. So some people, their God is what will people say? That's what they fear. That, that has become their God. Self, self is the God of some people. Flesh has become the God of some people. Ambition has become the God of some people. Too concerned about what people think and whatever you fear is your God. Are you too concerned about what people will say? That is that person's God. So I said we live in a world of many voices. A world of many opinions. But praise be to God. That in his kingdom which we belong. Which we are citizens of. We have fundamental guiding laws or commandments. We have a constitution. Hallelujah. We are guided by this. The Holy Spirit. I will obey. Everybody has an, an opinion. Don't do it this way. Don't do it that way. No. This is the one we follow. Hallelujah. This is what guides us. I said we have a teacher in the Holy Ghost. Our God guides us. He instructs us. Psalm 32 verse 8. I says, I will guide you. I will instruct you. I will lead you in the way that you should go. So I will instruct you and teach you in the way which thou shalt go. And I will guide you with my eye. This is guidance that we subscribe to. Not what people, the opinions of men. Everybody saying something. Everywhere. That's why you set a time that you spend on social media. Say, 
one hour to do. After that one, 15 minutes is what I will do. So the 15 minutes, all, go through all your whatever, whatever. No, 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 finish. When you go there, don't you see how many people are talking? Everybody has opi- an opinion. The word of many voices, let's be guided by the voice of the Lord. In a world where everybody has got an opinion, let this book guide you. Not what they say. At that wedding today, I said the one that made them, the one who began the beginning, made them male and female. That is what the Bible tells me. I will stay with that. Nobody can force me out of that disposition. That my, no, that is what the book says. The all-knowing, the all-wise. He made them male and female. Opinions of men will tell you other ones. Other voices will say otherwise. But no, we are guided by this. So this is it. I share this with contenders, the, the youth group on, the, um, on Sunday. You know, the Bible says, incline your ear. It says, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. That's Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. Do not listen to the many voices, to the many opinions. Don't. Don't listen to what other people are. Don't listen to what they are saying from wherever. So I said, do not be a slave to the opinions of men. Don't be a slave to the responses of unbelievers. Don't allow your happiness be dependent on the reactions of certain people. Do not be disappointed when men talk you down, doubt you, or reject you. When you look at the Bible, you will see men that were rejected. But what was, how they were seen in heaven was different. Jephthah, Jephthah for instance, he was rejected by his people. But heaven did not reject him. Jeremiah said, ah, because of his own quote, because of his own palatable prophecies, his own people rejected him. Don't let your joy depend on the acceptance or the rejection of men. In fact, Jesus Christ says in, let's look at this scripture, in Matthew chapter 10 verse 24. Matthew 10, 24. He said, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. If he was rejected, we will be rejected. If he was mocked, and I I, I then found out from the book of Matthew recently that even the the way they mocked Jesus was in different stages. Before he was crucified, when they were saying, "Eh, release all, we give uh, Barabbas to us and crucify this one, the people were rejoicing. But there was already a prophecy. Let's go there, let's look at this quickly. Let's look at Matthew chapter 20 verse 19. Matthew 20 verse 19. There was already a prophecy that he shall shall deliver him to Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. But it will not end there. If he was going to be mocked, and he was mocked, and he is telling you that a servant is not greater than his master, and he is your master, don't you think you will be mocked too? But did that stop him from rising on the third day? Now, when you now go to Matthew 27, that is where we will see the different 
levels, the different stages of the mockery that they gave to him. We'll look at verse 26 first. Or maybe we'll take it from... Let's take it from 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing but that rather a tumult was made... He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. You see that? Now look at the next verse, 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, 28. And they stripped him and put him on a scarlet robe. If they did this to him, and he took it. And you are not greater than him. Don't let even the mockery of men stop you. So I said at his trial, he was mocked. Actually, just after the trial, as we saw in 20, verse 26 of Matthew 27. After his condemnation by Pontius Pilate, as we saw there in verse 29, he was mocked. At his crucifixion, let's read verse 30 to 31. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away. To crucify him. So Jesus was mocked by Roman, the Roman soldiers. Rejected by his people in favor of a criminal. The, the, the Barabbas that we saw there. The soldiers spat on him. Beat him. Mocked him. But do you know also that Noah was mocked? Just imagine if Noah allowed the mockery of the people stopping from building the ark. Look at how stupid he, he was like a stupid man before them. That's why I said it's okay to look stupid before men. Noah looked stupid before the men in his day. Then I saw a scripture recently I'm going to say it. After saying it, I have not heard anyone say it before. But after saying it, I will check with the ones that are above me if what I'm going to say now is correct. Because I've not heard anybody say it before. We've always heard that Sarah laughed at God. Is that not? And that laughter was, uh, it was in mockery. Do you guys know that? That's the one we know. But do you know that Abraham too, Abraham also laughed. I saw it, I said, ah, Abraham mocked God too. After saying it, I will go and check with authority. If they said what you said was wrong, I would say, okay, maybe I got the interpretation wrong. We will look at Genesis in verse 15, chapter 15, verse 1. And after, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in 
a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham, I'm thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And you read it, the entire verses, and you will see all that God said he was going to do. Now, let's go to verse chapter 17. Verse 5, God said, Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Right? Now, let's read from verse 15. Look at this. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai the wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Look at verse 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, was he not doubting here? Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Do you know what he's saying? So God, have you lost your mind? Have you seen where somebody that is hundred years old gave birth before this God? <laughs> oh, this God's mind is not correct again. That is what it is. The Bible said, then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. How will we know that that laughter was not in faith? Was and said in his heart, shall it? It was questioning the faithfulness of God. And shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear? Was this not doubting? This is mockery, this kind of laugh. Oh, does anybody agree with me? Okay, good. So if, if we call the authority and they say, no, 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 that message was wrong. They will say, I, it was not only me. I had a, some other people that agreed with me. So we can say from, from our understanding at the moment, you know, we grow in, in understanding, in revelation. From what we know here right now, from our understanding right now, God was mocked by Abraham. Anybody agree with me again? Put your hand up. Let's say, okay. You, okay, good. So God was mocked by Abraham. So it's okay to be mocked. Sarah's own, we, all, we already know about how Sarah laughed in chapter 18 from verse 12. So we won't look at that because of time. So please, many of us here that are not comfortable talking about Jesus, evangelizing, going on the street because of what people will say. Rise above that. The almighty God himself was mocked by Abraham. Sarah laughed in mockery too. Questioned him. Noah was called stupid. Jesus was mocked. Don't let the opinions of men, don't let their mockery, don't let the many voices in the world today stop you. Hallelujah. This I wrote here. I say many of us believers are dreadful of insults, of persecution, of ridicule, of mockery, of being shamed by the society, especially in front of others. So at work, you don't want to, you don't want people to know that you are a Christian. You hide because you are concerned that you will be shamed in front of others. But I hope that that 
will change tonight because God was mocked. No, many of them, Jeremiah, Jephthah, Moses, all David was rejected. In fact, his own rejection was terrible. So don't even let the rejection of men get to you. He said, call, bring all your children. Then he called every other child and left David, his own father. No wonder the guy said, even if my father and mother Hallelujah. Verse 12 of chapter 18, Genesis. Said, Therefore David, uh, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? So, we'll stop here, but now you see that God, Jesus, forget even about Noah, about the others, they were mocked. So don't hide. Don't hide your Christianity. Take a stand. Be bold about what you stand for. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's celebrate the Lord. Christian, I come, I want us to pray for you, my sister. You know I love you so much. I'm sure you know that by now. Let me carry this thing because I'm not coming up again. We just pray for you. Thank you. Bless you. I want, I want us to pray over Christiana. Not that you ask me or not that uh, I told you I was going to do this. No. Is this Psalm 118 verse 10? You know that scripture that says, The nations compassed round about me, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Check 118 verse 10. Yes. And all nations compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. In fact, let's look at verse 11. Ooh, what are the time is gone. They compass me about, yeah, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Twelve. Yes, they compass me about like bees. They are quenched as a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. We're going to pray over her. Anything that has come against her, anything that is against her, today in the name of Jesus, we destroy them. We destroy it. Any power, any eye of evil that is monitoring her, anyone that has, any group that have come together because of her, so stop her. We destroy tonight. We destroy that gang up. Can you pray, everybody? Make sure you are praying for her in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that has. That has planted anything, any power, any force, anything that is against you, we destroy it tonight. We destroy it tonight. Every monitoring eye, every device that is used to monitor your life, your progress, we destroy that device tonight. We destroy it tonight. We cut it off. We cut it off tonight. In the name of Jesus. Every phase of limitation that has been built around your life. We pull it down. We destroy it tonight. We destroy it. Every gang up. Every agreement of darkness we reverse it 
We change it tonight. Any voice that is speaking destruction over you, making enchantment incantations over you, we silence them tonight. We storm those storms of evil tonight in the name of Jesus. Anything that has risen against you. Tonight we make a declaration. The Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. We issue a decree tonight. Trouble her no more. Trouble her no more. Trouble her no more in the name of Jesus. Let the mouth of lions be stopped. Father, may you stop the mouth of lions. Anything that is out to destroy your daughter, Father, may that thing be destroyed tonight in the name of Jesus. You are free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Is that, is that Sister Rita? Are you Rita? Are you the one? Okay. Is that your mother? Father, we pray in your mercies, O oh God, may you perfect all that concerns your daughter. We speak peace over her mind. We speak to the forces that have troubled her. We say trouble her no more. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, by the hand of your spirit, may your daughter be ushered into rest. Let our life be surrounded by your peace. Let our minds not be troubled anymore. We speak peace over her in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Mama, for bringing her. May the Lord continue to strengthen you. You will rejoice you will rejoice. Your joy, no one is permitted to snatch away. Your testimony, no one is permitted to snatch it. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. In one minute, can you want, do you want to talk to the Lord? Pray also that nothing will stop you. In the name of Jesus. Nothing, no situation. No situation will stop you. Nothing will rob your passion for God. The opinions of men will not come. The Bible says, go in this thy might. Have not I commanded you? Father, we thank you for grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>